Hi, welcome to Unit 5, Day 7, Types of Chemical Reactions. We're, today we're going to focus on combustion reactions. So this week we're learning about different types of chemical reactions, and today our focus is on combustion reactions. And just a quick reminder of why we're learning this. Remember, um, as we mentioned in Day 6, that if you know the type of reaction that you have, there's a couple things you can do. One, you can predict the products from the reactants and vice versa. And then finally, you can use certain strategies to balance chemical equations based on the type of reaction. So this week, we're learning about the five different types of chemical reactions. On Monday, we looked at synthesis and decomposition. Today, we're going to focus on combustion. And our success criteria for today are as follows. We're going to define what a combustion reaction is and predict its products. We'll also be able to identify a reaction as combustion and also synthesis, decomposition, or neither, since that's what we covered last class. Um, we'll review endo and exothermic reactions, including the reaction profiles and the delta H or change in enthalpy. And finally, we're going to use some strategies for balancing combustion reactions. All right, let's get started. So what is a combustion reaction? Um, in its truest definition, combustion reactions um, are reactions that during the reaction, the reactants, what you're starting with, are going to burn in an oxidant, typically oxygen, to produce an oxide. And an oxide is a compound with an oxygen in it. Now, um, there are a lot of reactions that can be considered combustion reactions. But to make it easier on ourselves, we're going to focus on probably one of the most important combustion reactions, and that is the, com the combustion of organic molecules. When I say organic molecules, those are molecules with carbons in them. Now, you probably have heard of the term organic before, and it kind of implies something that's natural, like if you go grocery shopping, whatever, organic fruits and, and things like that. Um, so why would they call a molecule organic? Well, it actually comes from the same root word or the same meaning. Um, molecules with carbons in them are called organic because they're often found in many natural substances. Here are a couple of examples, like it, DNA. Uh, if you look at the this model here of DNA, all the gray-ish spheres, those represent carbon atoms. So DNA is made up of carbon. Um, cellulose, which is the structure that makes up plants. Um, remember all of these corners here with, with no atoms written on them, those are all carbon. And then finally, amino acids, which are the building box of proteins. As you can see, there are carbons in there. Right. So um, we're going to focus on the combustion of organic molecules, which are just molecules with carbons in them. So let's look at a sort of a demo of um, combustion of organic molecules. This is known as the Whoosh bottle demo. And in this um, demonstration, which you do not want to try at home because um, this can be very dangerous, um, what you have here is the combustion of isopropyl alcohol, um, isopropyl alcohol inside of one of those water dispenser containers. So this is what that reaction looks like. This is isopropyl alcohol, and it reacts with oxygen, and you need five oxygens for this, for this reaction, to produce carbon dioxide and water, so three CO2s and four waters. So how does this all relate to combustion reaction? One of our goals is to be able to identify a combustion reaction and predict its products. And for organic molecules, there's a couple of key things that we need to know about um, combustion of organic molecules. First thing is the reactants are going to include whatever your organic molecule is and O2. The combustion of organic molecules must have O2 as a reactant. The second thing is that your products are going to be H2O and CO2. Those are the two products. Now, the reason why... Um, I want to sort of emphasize H2O and CO2 is because sometimes you may see CO, carbon monoxide, as a product. That's only for incomplete combustion reactions. We're going to assume for our purposes that all of our combustion reactions are complete. So the two products are going to be H2O and CO2. All right, so now that we've talked about how to um, 
define a combustion reaction and how to identify it, we're going to try our first CFU. So which of the following reactions represent the combustion, um, a combustion reaction, let's just say. So you want to pause the video now, and when you press play again, the answer will be revealed. Remember that for combustion reactions, you should have O2 as a reactant and CO2 and H2O as products. Okay, so let's take a look at the answer. The answer is choice C. So it's a combustion reaction because we have O2 as a reactant and CO2 and H2O as our products. Let's talk about why the other ones are not combustion reactions. So for choice A, um, you don't have O2 as a reactant and you don't have CO2 and H2O as products. So that's pretty simple. You don't see any of those things there, so you know it's not a combustion. The next one we do see H2O, but remember, um, in order for it to be, um, and we also see O2 as well, but in order for it to be a combustion reaction, the O2 should be the reactant, not the product. And finally, for the last one, um, we see H2O and CO2 as products, but one, they're not the only product, and two, um, there's no O2 as a reactant, so that's how we know it's not a combustion reaction. All right, here's our next CFU, and this is sort of a review. So for all the non-combustion reactions, A, B, and D, um, you're going to label them as synthesis, decomposition, or neither. Remember, synthesis should have um, two or more reactants coming together to make one product, and decomposition should have um, uh, one reactant making two or more products. Pause the video now. When you press play again, the answer will be revealed. Okay, so here are the answers. Here you have two uh, reactants making one product, that's synthesis. And then for the last two, you have one reactant. So you start with one thing and it breaks apart into two or more things. All right, next uh, CFU, going back to combustion. So we're done with that review. Butane is a fuel used in lighters. I want you to write the unbalanced chemical equation for the combustion of butane. And the reason why I say unbalanced is because you don't want to worry about the coefficients. The thing you need to focus on is making sure you have the correct reactants and products. All right, so pause the video now. When you press play again, the answer will be revealed. All right, so here's the answer. Um, C4H10, which is butane plus O2, goes to form CO2 and H2O. So how do we get that? The first thing is you're going to write your given organic molecule, in this case butane, C4H10, as your reactant. So we're going to start by writing that. The next thing we're going to write is O2, or molecular oxygen, as our other reactant. Remember, O2 must be a reactant in a combustion reaction. Then finally, for on our product side, after we draw our arrow, so to the right of the arrow, we're going to write CO2 and H2O as our products. So um, the key thing, you start with your organic molecule as a reactant, add O2 as a reactant, and then on the product side, CO2 and H2O. All right, now let's do a quick review on endo versus exothermic. And it's apropos here, um, and you'll see why we cover that here for combustion re reactions in a moment. So recall that endothermic reactions, um, heat enters the system, it enters into the reactant, reaction. And then for exothermic reaction, heat exits the, the, the system. Now a combustion reaction, as you saw in the whoosh bottle demo, um, they release heat. So when you see bur burning of fuel, that releases heat. So they'll feel hot. So here's our CFU. Based on what you know about endo versus exothermic reaction, um, do you think combustion reactions are endothermic or exothermic? And how do you know? Pause the video now, and when you press play again, the answer will be revealed. The answer is exothermic, um, and that's because, um, remember, exothermic reactions releases heat and they feel hot. So let's just take uh, a good quick review. Remember exothermic heat exits. So since the heat is exiting the system into the surroundings, the surroundings like your hand or the air is going to feel hot. Whereas in endothermic, the heat enters or goes into the system from the surroundings. So the, the system or the reaction takes heat from the surrounding. So the surroundings are going to feel cold. And we sort of looked at that through sort of these, these diagrams. So this is just sort of a recap of things that we covered last week. Exothermics feel hot and endothermics feel cold. All 
All right, now that we reviewed that, let's go into our next TFU. Um, so given that combustion reactions are exothermic, which of the following reaction profiles could represent the combustion of butane? Explain. Now remember these reaction profiles are just graphs that show the change in potential energy during a reaction. All right, so you want to pause the video now. When you press play again, the answer will be revealed. Okay, so... Um, before I, uh, we go into the answer, the first thing we want to remember to do if you ha are given a reaction profile, it's keep in mind what's going on in the reaction profile. That first flat line that you see in the reaction profiles, those represent the um, those lines represent the energy of the reactants, right? And then the second flat line that you see represent the energy of the products. So you need to keep track that they're showing you the relative energy of the reactants versus the products. And the same thing can be shown in the second graph. First line is the reactant, second one's the product. Now, the answer here is profile B, and that's because um, that's, your, that's an exothermic reaction profile. And we know that because in an exothermic reaction, the product, the energy of the product, it will be lower than that of the reactant. And why is that? That's because in an exothermic reaction, heat energy leaves or is released or lost by the system. So that means that what you're starting off with, um, what you end up with, will have a lower energy than what you started off with. So the products will be lower energy because heat is being released from the system. So um, the next thing we're going to talk about is, as a review is the change in enthalpy. Now we keep talking about heat, but in a reaction profile, heat is not on the reaction profile, it's known as change in enthalpy or delta H, but it quantifies the heat loss or gain during the reaction. And you can measure it as the difference in energy between the reactants and products. So if you're given the reaction profiles, you take the difference in energy between the reactants and the products, and that difference in energy is your delta H. You can do the same thing for an endothermic reaction. So in an exothermic reaction, because heat is being lost, um, the change in and enthalpy will be negative, and for endothermic, it will be positive. All right, so this is our um, next CFU. The reaction profile for the combustion of butane is shown below. You're going to use the information to calculate the delta H and then um, determine if the value is reasonable based on the sign of delta H. So remember, the combustion reaction is exothermic. Pause the video now. When you press play again, the answer will be revealed. So on our energy profile, our reaction profiles, we start off with our reactant, and there's our product. To get the delta H, we're going to take the difference in the um, energy of the reactants and products. Um, and so it's always product minus reactant. So we're going to do 10, which is the enthalpy of the product, minus 34, which is the enthalpy of the reactant. And that gives us a negative 24 kilojoules for our delta H. And that sign makes, makes sense because exothermic reactions, since they lose heat energy should be negative, delta H should be negative. Okay, so um, so far um, for today, we had, we've had a total of four success criteria. So far what we've done is we have covered how to define a combustion reaction and predict its products, so CO2 and H2O, um, and how to identify a combustion reaction versus synthesis, decomposition, or a reaction that's neither. We also reviewed endothermic and exothermic. In our next video, we're going to cover using strategies for balancing combustion reactions. Have a quality day.